Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is the first installment of the IC705 from A to Z series. Just like the 7300 and the 7100, I intend to work my way through all of the features and functions of the radio in small bite-sized chunks, with each video focusing on one item or a few related items. With three different radios in the mix now, I'm going to do my best to maintain a balance between the radios, in fact, there's still some features of the 7300 that I haven't covered, and it's due for another video shortly. I think that's enough inside baseball for now. Let's get on with today's topic. One of the first things that I did was to put Anderson power poles on the 12-volt power cord that came with the radio. The other thing I did was to take a red Sharpie and color the white heat shrink tubing on the positive wire. The two white heat shrink sleeves are labeled plus and minus, and the positive wire has a white stripe to identify it. Still, I like the idea of having it clearly red showing the coloring for the positive lead. Of course, with the power poles, it'll make it much harder to accidentally reverse polarity, but this will still help if the connectors ever get removed or replaced in the future. The next thing I did was to attach the self-adhesive rubber feet that came in the little package on the uh, sticky sheet on their four outlined locations on the bottom of the radio. I'm not quite sure why ICOM didn't just install those at the factory. But while we're looking at the bottom, there's a couple other items to note. There is a quarter 20 mounting hole to use with a standard camera tripod or any kind of similar accessory. And there were four M4 threaded mounting holes that match the AMPS hole pattern. That's compatible with RAM and several other brands of mobile mounting brackets. I've been using RAM mounts for most of my mobile gear for several years now, and I've been very pleased with them. I put a couple of links in the description for some different uh, ball plates that match these holes. Now let's install the strain relief bracket for the microphone and speaker cables. There's a spiral keyring style ring that's pre-installed on the mic cable. You twist that through one of the two small holes on the bracket. I tried both of them and it doesn't really seem to make a difference either way, so take your pick here. The bracket screws on to the ground screw. There is a square boss around the ground screw hole that keeps the bracket from spinning once you have the screw tight. Then just plug in the mic and speaker connectors and you're done. The arrangement provides plenty of strain relief, but the large loop of wire that it leaves seems a little bit awkward. For the ground connection, I just clipped an alligator clip to the strain relief bracket and to my station ground. It's definitely not the best arrangement, but it's something for a temporary setup. We'll see if we can come up with something a little better in the future. The next thing you'll want to do is install a micro SD card. The radio doesn't require one for basic operation, but there are a number of important features and functions that do require a micro SD card in order to work. The card inserts behind a rubber cap just below the speaker and microphone connectors. The card socket is a standard push in to latch and push it again to unlatch type. Inserting the card is pretty easy, even if you have relatively large hands. You want to make sure that the card is oriented correctly. The small notch on the side of the card should be facing up. Another check is that the metal contacts on the card should be facing toward the front of the radio. Inserting the card is easy, but if you have anything other than very tiny fingers, you will find it very difficult to extract the card. I found that a pair of forceps or tweezers made it much easier to get the card out of the radio. The card that I installed is a 32 gigabyte card. This is way more than you need, but it's what I had laying around and it'll allow me to record audio for probably days. Regardless of when you're watching this, or whether you bought your radio new or used, you should check the firmware version in the radio and then check the ICOM website to see if there have been any updates since your radio was built. Tommy Martin from Amateur Logic TV did a nice segment reviewing the update procedure on Amateur Logic number 148. So I'm not going to go over that here. I've put a couple of links in the description. One link is for the entire show, if you're interested in watching it. And there's a second link there that takes you straight to the start of the firmware update segment. 
You can find the current version information by looking in the lower right corner of the display during Power On, or by going to the Settings and then Other menu, and then select Information and then Version. One final thing that we'll cover this time is something that I think is important for any radio that supports this feature. From the factory, the power on screen displays the ICOM logo, the radio model, and some other information, and that's it. Let's update that setting so that your call sign will be included on the power up display. First you press menu, then set, then we're going to find the my station submenu, press that, go to my call sign, and then there's six memories that it stores. So if you press and hold number one, you'll get the edit screen. Then you press the edit and now you can enter your call sign on the keyboard. So we'll just enter my call sign for my radio here. And then you press enter once it's in. And now that's in the my call sign and then we'll just back all the way out here. And now if we power off the radio and then we'll power it on again. And now, this time when it powers up, we should see your call sign, or in this case, my call sign, at the bottom of the screen. And that's it. So now you've got your call sign on there. The My Station information on the 705 also sets your call sign information for using D-Star, and we'll cover that when we get to the D-Star portions for this radio. That's all we're going to cover this time. As I'm recording this, we're into November here. I'm hoping that there will still be some nice days so that I can do the next few segments outside, operating portable in the environment this radio was made for. If you enjoyed this video, or found it helpful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider subscribing. You may also click on the bell icon to be notified of new videos when they come out. There's a companion website for the channel at a to z dot tech. You'll find a link for that in the description. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.